Okay, welcome back, Servet. <laughs> Hello. Come back. Hello. Well, we've got an interesting um, article for you today. You might like it. It's about computers. <clears throat> the size of the internet. The size of the entire internet. I don't know. That's very really big. Do you, yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit strange. The title's a bit strange, but you'll 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 understand when uh, you start reading the article. Yeah, I guess there's there was a. Uh, project. Uh, every computer shares their CPU power and through internet, so that you can build a, bi a huge supercomputer. You yes. don't actually go somewhere dedicated an area and build the supercomputer. You just create an application and you send your CPU power. That you don't mm. use, that is not necessary to you. You contribute. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Um, it's going. To, it's quite long, actually. The article. I hope I can manage to read it all the time. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Evgeny. Uh, Hello. Uh, hi, teacher. Merhaba, servet. Nice Merhaba. to see you. Привет. Привет. How's it going? How's everything on your side? Uh, yesterday we had a thunderstorm watch, and today oh, we oh. have a thunderstorm. So I decided to stay at home, whether to uh, be at work. Ah, is everything? Was it really bad? Really severe? I, I don't know, it? but but wind is blustery. So it's very 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 strong. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's that time of the year, isn't it? Usually about mm -hmm. autumn. Hmm. So your weekend wasn't the greatest. You stayed indoors. <laughs> yeah, I decided to stay indoors, but I have today a French lesson at 6 p.m. and uh, I, I hope that it will finish at this time. Oh no! And you have to. Is it far? You have to travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to travel. Oh no! Oh. Well, I hope it clears up so you can, you know, make yeah. it to your French French class. <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe we should start rather well, because we're already ten minutes into the <coughs> lesson, and maybe uh, we get some more students joining us. I think Cecilia will join. She's she's a regular. Um, but anyways, all right. Science and technology is our topic, guys. And um, uh, let me begin by asking you a few questions uh, to warm up. Why are computer professionals geeky? I'll, I'll paste the actual question so I can. Oh, sorry. So, why are computer professionals geeky? Is geeky a negative word or is it? Is it like nerd or something? It's like a nerd, yeah. But why are they nerdy? They have to be nerdy because it requires so much work, usually uh, so much mathematic, detailed things. Uh, requires so much attention. Little details can cause a problem, so they have to work hard. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> mm, maybe because they spend too much time with computers and mm, mm, how, to, how to describe a, a bit mm, I don't know how to say but <laughs> when people uh, do not talkative, maybe, or not not socialize. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. So okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's quite. Uh, why are computer professionals geeky? Because perhaps, like both of you said, 
good good valid points. Uh, probably because they they spend a lot of time, you know, with computers and in front of TV monitors. Uh, sorry, uh, mo monitors, you know, computer monitors, and they do a lot of this um, information systems uh, type of stuff. So they tend to just be geeky. There's not much activity for them. They don't they don't really go out much and all that. So they become geeky and nerdy. Uh, but I don't think it's a negative thing. I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. You know. Um, but that's okay. Uh, welcome back, Dr. Tanchitin. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Okay, we're just doing a quick warm up. We're talking about science and technology. So uh, let's see. Here's another question Who fixes your computer when it crashes or when there's something wrong with it? IT guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, Servet could fix Hello. it. It's good. Yeah, Hello. I Hello. 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 I hear both my own computers, my mm -hmm. computer and all of my relatives' computers. So you're the one, you're the man to contact when something goes wrong. Yes. Excellent. All Technicians. The, all the free service. Hello, my computer is broken. Where should I come and take you to my home to fix today? <laughs> okay, whenever you want. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so basically technicians, a computer technician, somebody who is, um, you know, well, um, uh, you know, well informed about computers, software and hardware. So. It's usually a guy, anyways. He he comes and fixes it. Or, you know, here in the UK we have uh, these big, big uh, com not computer stores, but they're like um, uh, you know department stores almost, and they sell all sorts of electronics from TVs to computers to um, hi-fi's to dishwashers to washing machines, and they have a special department. Where if you ha if you if you bought something from them, let's say a laptop, you bring it to them, and they 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 can fix it for you, so that you have special places like that as well that provide the service. Excellent. Um, okay. Basically, what I'm eliciting from you guys is personal pronouns. Yeah. So when we use, um, what are personal pronouns? Who can tell me? <laughs> Um, personal pronouns mm -hmm. for, uh, like uh, mine, ours, okay. their, mm -hmm. uh, her, uh, his. Yes. Yes, that's it. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about these. Uh, these personal pronouns, there's a pronunciation which we need to keep in mind. And, but there is certain, let's say this example that we're going to use is the difference between the vowel in sheep and ship. Okay? So the difference between sheep and ship. It's very common for, for certain learners to make a mistake and always, uh, you know, say them. Uh, they say ship rather than sheep, you know, or they may even say ch, you know, as a chip or cheap. So uh, let's see, it's that <coughs> that uh, vowel that we're going to focus on. Okay, so the e and the e, right? The vowel sound. Those two sounds can be difficult for many students, right, to distinguish. So so basically. Um, let me give you some examples. I'm going to put some sentences here and see if you guys can read them for me. So, okay. Okay, Sarah, can you read that one, please? I told them to come over for dinner. Thanks. Okay, and what about this one here? So, and I want you to give me the difference between them. Okay, uh, Gany, can you read the next one? 
Uh, he said he was sick. So I told him, right? I told him to come over for dinner. I told him. And the second one, like what Jenny has just read, he said he was sick. He. You notice the difference between him and he now. Him is very quick, very short vowel. He is prolonged. Okay, so this is basically the difference now. Sheep, ship. Okay, and um, and there's a yeah. You have to make you have to sort of emphasize a little bit. He said he was sick. Okay. Um, what else is there? Uh, yeah, there are three main differences between the two sounds. So, firstly, the the vowel in the he is very tense. The vowel in him is more relaxed. So he, you can see your 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 cheekbone or your your cheeks. Sorry, they tense a little bit. But him, it just relaxed. Him, there's hardly any movement in your face. Yeah. Uh, secondly, the vowel in he is a little longer. You know that than him. So he compared to him. And, the, and the thirdly, the vowel in he has a little y quality to the end. So he, it's like you're saying a y at the end. Yeah? He. Uh, and the vowel in him has a little uh, h quality at the end. Him. Him. It's like you're breathing at him. Okay? So th these are very uh, petite, very detailed, um, focused um, you know, descriptions about the difference between them. And um, okay, let me give you more sentences so you guys can read and practice. So, Simone, welcome, Simone. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Did I? Is it Simon or Simone? How, I don't know uh, how to pronounce it. Simone. So my name is Wasim. So the nickname is uh, Simon. Ah, okay. So okay. can I call you Wasim, or how would you like me to call you? <laughs> Up to you. No problem. Okay. All right. Um, can you read the sentence, please, for me? It's in the, in the chat. Can I? Okay. So I'm new in the Colingo website, so I'm not habituated. Where okay. is it? Uh, oh, can you see the Colingo chat? There's a chat. Colingo chat. Yes, in the Colingo website, and uh, not in Google Plus, huh? No, no, on our on our Google Plus, on on our video. On yeah. Google. Uh, on Google Plus, uh, I uh, loading chat one moment. Okay, so it's loading. I don't have the yes, it's not ready. I don't know why. Okay, maybe you have to wait a few more seconds. Okay, or probably I must. Uh, Unless you, you might have to log refresh. out. Yeah, try to come back in in a few seconds. Sometimes it doesn't okay. load straight away. Yeah, so maybe refresh or log out and log in. Refresh. Okay, so I will refresh. Okay, Dr. Tachitin, can you read that sentence while we're seeing from the back? He walked his dog to the park. Again? He he walked his dog he walked his dog to the park. Yeah. So there has to be a distinction between he and his. Yes. Yeah, so he walked, he walked his dog to the park. Excellent. Yes. Okay, uh Simone. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, but okay. I don't have the chat uh, window. Still. So the same message loading chat one moment. Oh, no. Probably so, I can type in the Colingo website. I will type hello. I don't know if it's OK. Oh, yes, I can see you. Can you see what I've typed? Uh, can you see the sentence? He he hello and welcome. Uh, I, I oh. see now. Hello and welcome from Alan Zirik. You don't see uh, she visited her brother in Texas? Mm, you don't see any no, 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 That's no. strange. OK. Um, that's okay, we'll skip this then for you. Um, maybe just repeat after me. Can you repeat after me? She visited okay. her brother in Texas. She visited her she brother visited in Texas. She visited her brother in Texas. Yes, that's good. So she is prolonged. Yeah, She visited her brother in Texas. Yes. Excellent. 
And uh, one more. Uh, okay, can you repeat after me again? He told his mother not to worry about him. He told to his mother not to worry about him. Not to worry about me. To worry about me. Yeah, him. So he told his mother not to worry about him. He told his mother not to worry about him. Excellent. That's good. Okay, guys, I want you. Uh, I'm gonna get all of you to say these two words. Servet, can you start by saying these two words? Ben, Bean. Excellent. Benny. Ben, Bean. Well done. Can you repeat that, Simon? Uh, I didn't hear the. Bean, Bean. Bean. Ben, Bean. Yes. Well done, Doctor. Touch them. Bean, Bean. Well done. Okay, next. Servet. Set, seat. Excellent. Kenny. Set, seat. Well done. Simon. Set, seat. Well done. Seat. And Dr. Touchdown? Yes. Sit, seat. Well done. I like that. Servet, next. Seek, sick. Again? Seek. Mm -hmm. Okay, Evgeny? Uh, sick, sick. Mm, so this is a bit more tough. Simon? Yes, sick, sick. I, mm -hmm. I don't okay. know how to write it, but uh, I yeah. hear it like this. It's a shame. I'll, 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 I'll give it to you again in the other chat, just one second. And Dr. Tachitin? Sick, sick. Yeah, this is good. So basically, the first one is seek, and the second one is sick. It's very quick. Seek and sick. Seek, double E, sick, I C K. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the in the blue chat um, for uh, Simon. Simon, on the left side of the next to the video, there's a blue chat. You can click on that, and I'm gonna put the word in there for you. So you can see how it's felt. Uh, okay, next. Serve it. Lip, leap. Excellent. Jenny? Lip, leap. Well done. Simon? Simon, can you hear me? Lip, leap. Le Lip leap. Yes. And Dr. Tachitin? Leap leap. Excellent. That's it. So lip and leap. Okay, here's the next. One second. Okay, Servet? Teen ten. Well done. Kenny. Teen ten. Well done. Simon. Teen and tin. Teen, tin. Well done. Teen, tin. Excellent. Well done. So first is teen, double E N. Second is tin. I N. Yeah, there's a strange. It comes and goes. I don't know where it's coming from. That moving so sound. <laughs> oh, is this me? Then? Okay. Uh, go ahead, set it. Old, not, oh no, I can see it. Bed and bead. Well done, Kenny. Bed, bead. Mm -hmm. Simon? Bed, bead. Excellent. Dr. Tachitin? Bid, bead. Well done. Bid, bead. See the difference Sorry. there? Sorry, what's what uh, it means? Bead. Bead. What's a bead? Who knows what a bead is? Hmm? A bead is an offer, I guess. You give a yes. bid, for example, if you're in an auction. You mm -hmm. know what an auction is. Yep. 
So, so when you're bidding, you're bidding for something at an auction. You, maybe you want to buy a car, so you, you're going to bid. You have the highest bid. Okay, I bid twenty thousand dollars, and I want. Ah, okay, okay. But okay. bid, bid, as in E A D. What's bid? It's it's yeah. a noun. Yeah. Small balls in your necklace. Yes, like a small bead. You know, we have it on the tasbih. You know, tasbih. Uh, Muslims know it. Uh, and uh, it's very small beads. It can also be small pearls. Something, a small material can be made out of glass, stone, or similar material. Yeah, it's something very small, can be round as well. Like, like a pearl. Like pearls, yeah, you, like, like Servet said, you can put it on your necklace. You put yeah. a lot of beads together, a lot of beads together, and it forms a necklace. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All done. Okay, guys, so. Let's try to incorporate this, uh, you know, short and long e, you know, or e vowel in, in our discussions. And let's move to the actual grammar. The grammar is fairly simple. It's um, no rocket science. And so it's, it's personal pronouns. <clears throat> so they're based on four things. Personal pronouns are based on, upon four things. Uh, if it is being used as the object or the subject of the sentence. So the subject is the noun performing the action, as you know that. It replaces the noun and it usually goes in front of the sentence. Like in this example we have he. He likes dogs. He becoming the subject. You know? He likes dogs, dogs object. They ate the cookies. So these are personal pronouns now. They ate the cookies. The object receives the verb's action. It replaces the noun, and it usually comes right after the verb. <clears throat> so, Jack fed him. Jenny ate it. Okay? So, Jack is a subject here. Fed him. Him being object. Jenny ate it. Okay? Note, some verbs can have two objects. So... Uh, Dan gave the dog to him, or Dan gave it to him. So here we have two objects. Welcome back, Cecilia. Okay, we're just in the middle of describing the grammar, Cecilia, uh, about personal pronouns. So the gender. We have male, female, and neuter. Okay, so male would be he hates cats, female, you know, she needs five dollars, and Nuta is it, so Jenny ate it. Okay, if it is first person, second person, or third person, so first person would be I ate the brownies, second person, you are late, and third person, they, never come, so it can be um, he, she, or they. Never came. If it is singular or plural, so singular, Dan gave it to her. Plural, we will arrive tomorrow. Okay. Secondly, we also have reflexive pronouns, okay, which are used when the subject and object are the same. So unlike other pronouns, you must use reflexive pronouns so that you don't repeat the noun. So you say, Jane sent herself an email. And you don't say, Jane sent Jane an email. And you don't say, Jane sent her an email. So if you're sending yourself an email, this is how you say it. Or Jane sent herself an email. This is called a reflexive pronoun. Jack learned English by himself. Um, not Jack learn English by Jack or Jack learn English by him. Yeah, uh, Servet fixes uh, his computer himself. Okay, and so on. So here's the actual table. Take a good look at it. 
So it's broken down. Uh, on the left, far left, we have singular or plural. And then we have the uh, first, second, and third person for singular and then for plural as well. The genders, male or female. Pronouns. Uh, sorry, subject pronouns. Uh, object pronouns. Okay. And reflexive pronouns. So I, me, myself. You, you, yourself. They are both male and female, singular. Then we have for male, he, him, himself. Female, she, her, herself. And neuter, it, it, and itself. So this is all third person. Okay? And then for plural, male or female first person, we can say we, us, ourselves. Okay, a reflexive pronoun here is ourselves. Second person uh, for male or female is you, you, yourselves. So yourselves, not yourself. Okay, yourselves. And third person, male or female, is they, them, themselves. Okay, themselves. <clears throat> okay, are there any questions? Everything's uh, on par? All right, let's practice a little bit. When we don't use by, we say just myself or yourself. I guess it refers that you are not getting any help when you say by myself. It refers you are doing it alone. Maybe there are people around, but you are doing it alone. Is mm -hmm. it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. In a way. So, <clears throat> and you have to. <clears throat> for example, in this sentence, Jane sent herself an email. Mm -hmm. So we can't really say Jane sent by herself an email. Yes. Because what did she send herself? An email. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. For so example, study, you know, I study myself and I study by myself. So. Yeah, here it's, it's better to say by myself. Mm -hmm. I study by myself. And you don't have to add anything to that. That's it. I study by myself. Okay. So, and you can't really say I study myself. Uh, you know, it depends. It, it, it might be changing. The meaning might be changing, especially if you add something to that. And uh, but by myself here, the, in that case, you should use by definitely. Mm -hmm. um, okay. How does the meaning change if, if you say? I study myself. Mm. I study by myself. I study myself. Um, it, it doesn't actually change. The meaning doesn't change. But um, if you say I study myself, mm -hmm. what do you think is more gram grammatically correct? I study myself or I study by myself? As far as I know, only myself means that you are not getting any help. Mm -hmm. If you say by myself, it refers that you are doing it alone, on your own. Yes, it so has that, I, exactly. It has the emphasis. So when you use by myself, you're emphasizing that you're doing it alone. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Yeah. It, are you still confused? No, that's okay. 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 So let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, who wants to give me a sentence using a, a reflexive pronoun, but make it plural first person? So plural first person. Okay, reflexive pronoun. Who wants to try? I don't want to show you the the table below because it'll be too easy for you. So I, I want you to think now what I'm saying. So first person, plural, reflexive pronoun. They found the website by themselves. 
Yes. That's good. Oh, first person, though. Yeah. First person. Is first person themselves? First person uh, by... Ah, I. It means I. Yes, that's right. So, but plural, make it plural. I, I find the... I found the website by myself. Ourselves. Yeah, yeah, I think... You should, you should say we found uh, the website ourselves. Yeah, like um, Tachitin said. So first person plural would be ourselves. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Do you have one separate? We shouldn't so. consume much fast food to keep ourselves healthy. Yes, perfect. Well done. We finished this task ourselves. We finished this task ourselves. Ourselves, excellent. Good one. That's it. And what about if we use... Let's see. Uh, I want to quickly have a look. Uh -huh. Okay, make it third third person but female reflexive pronoun. So third person female reflexive pronoun. She succeeded. She succeeded by herself. Yes, good. That's good. Any other sentences? She prepared uh, the exam for uh, herself, or by by herself, by herself. By herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, guys. All right. So let's move on. Can we move on to the article, or is that, are there any other questions, or you want to add another sentence or example? We finished the text ourselves. Why, in this case, we don't say by ourselves? Because it looks very similar to I study by myself. Mm -hmm. In this case, in the first one we say by myself, in the second one we say just ourselves, no by. So, what's the sentence again? We finished? We finished the tasks ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I studied by myself. In the second one, we say we have by. In the uh -huh. other one, we don't have by. So maybe is, is it related to object? Uh, in this one example, there is an object. This task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We finished this task ourselves. But the other uh, uh, sentence, there isn't any object. Uh, I think I think they both are objects, aren't they? So, see, um, we finish the tasks ourselves, yeah, and we finish the tasks by ourselves. That doesn't go grammatically. So here, if you want to express this meaning, we finished it ourselves. Okay, there was no help from the outside. Uh, but in the other singular case where you said uh, by myself and myself, see, I'm not sure about the exact ruling to tell you the truth, but maybe in the singular form there's a possibility of using both. So you can include by and you can also exclude it. So I finished the task myself, so I did it myself, right? And I finished it by myself. So there's a slight, perhaps a slight meaning in, in uh, or emphasis, you know, mm -hmm. a difference in meaning. Uh, when you say by myself, as in you alone. Mm -hmm. Now if you say I finished it myself, as in I finished it also myself. So if you say by myself, 
When you include that by, basically you're emphasizing that you had no help at all. So you finish it by yourself. This is the distinction. But when you say, I finished it myself, uh, you, do you understand? It also maybe. means you finished it alone, but it, there's no emphasis on that. It can also mean, I finished it myself. I finished, I too finished it myself, you know? When we say we, we finish the task ourselves, there's no possibility that you don't you didn't get help because you are in, in a group. Yeah. That's why maybe we don't say ourselves. We say but we don't say by ourselves because by ourselves implies that you are alone. But if you are if you the subject is plural, there's mm -hmm. no possibility that you didn't get any help. If yeah, that could be group. It. Yeah, that, because there is that difference between the singular and the plural, isn't it? So, yeah, that could be it. Okay. Makes more um, sense now. Okay. okay. It makes a bit more sense now. Yes. Okay. Let's, let's keep moving then. Here's the article. I've put it on the chat for you to open it. Yeah, let's see. All right, the man who will build a computer the size of the entire internet. It's quite lengthy, but I'll try and cover it. So this is the man. Solomon Heights, the driving force behind Docker, an open source project that seeks uh, to recast the internet as one giant computer. Now have a look at his, his picture here. Or oh, his t shirt. We're going to talk about that in a little while. It's going to actually mention it in the article. So it's like a whale carrying some containers. So Google runs its web empire on computers the size of warehouses. All right? Inside the massive data uh, centers, the drive um, things like Google Search and Go uh, Gmail. And, and, and Google Maps, you'll find tens of thousands of machines, each small enough to hold in your arms, but thanks to a new breed of software that spans this sea of uh, servers, the entire data center operates like a single system, one giant computer that runs any application the company throws at it. A Google application like Gmail doesn't run on a particular server or even a select group of servers. It runs on the data center, grabbing computing power from, one, uh, from any machine that can spare it. Uh, Google calls this warehouse-scale computing, and for some, it's an idea so large they have trouble wrapping their heads around it. Solomon Hikes isn't one of them. He aims for something even bigger. With a new open source software project known as Docker, he wants to build a computer the size of the internet. Um, sitting in his company's office on the 16th floor of a high-rise in, in downtown San Francisco, uh, Hikes is wearing a t-shirt with a whale on it. This is a whale of the cartoon variety. It's, it's grinning slightly as it floats on a wavy blue sea, and on its back it carries a stack of shipping containers, the sort you'd see towering over the docks in Oakland, across the bay from San Francisco, or on the train cars heading north towards Sacramento. That may seem a little odd, but the whale is a metaphor for the way Hikes hopes to remodel the internet. Just as in the 1950s, shipping containers reinvented the way we move goods across the globe, giving us a standard means of shifting massive amounts of stuff from boat to train to truck and into stores and factories. Hikes wants to create a standard means of moving software applications across the internet and the world's private company networks from machine to machine to machine. The cartoon whale is the logo for, the, uh, for Docker, which Hikes and his 18-person company, .cloud, unveiled earlier this year. Docker is a way of packaging software applications into their own shipping containers so you can readily load them and run them on any machine equipped with any flavor of Linux. 
Linux is an operating system, by the way. Uh, the open source operating system that now drives so many of the servers that underpin the internet. The goal is to foster a world where anyone can treat any pool of machines in much the same way Google treats its private data centers. If you wrap your software in Docker containers, you can readily spread them not only across the machines in your own data centers, but onto popular cloud serv services such as Amazon Web Services and back again. It all starts with something simple and unimportant. A container is just a box, says Heights. Dot Cloud's founder uh, and, and chief technology officer. But with this box, you can package up so many software products and platforms and systems that each have their own way of doing things. And in the end, these containers are everywhere, and you can move them anywhere. The Docker project is only months old, but it's based on technologies that have long been used on Linux and other server operating systems, including the Solaris operating system built by Sun Microsystems, and because it packages these technologies into something that's far easier to use, it has quite suddenly caught the attention of software developers across Silicon Valley, a place that um, Serbet would love to visit, isn't it? Yes. Uh, eBay, the web's online auction house, is now using Docker containers as a means of testing new software inside its data centers. San Francisco startup MemSQL is doing much the same in testing the database software it sells to other businesses, a database that runs across dozens of machines. And another startup, uh, Core OS, offering the new Linux operating system specifically designed for use with Docker containers. Docker is the toolkit you need to get this idea right, says eBay engineer Ted Zuba. It makes it incredibly easy to take an application, any process that runs on a computer, and stick it in its own container. This idea is particularly appealing because so many of today's software applications no longer run on standalone machines, like Google's, Google's, <coughs> excuse me, like Google's web services. They run across dozens upon dozens servers, and Docker provides a means of quickly spreading software across such an enormous collection of systems and on to new systems as time goes on. These days, software developers have thousands of languages and frameworks to choose from. And they are looking to deploy across large, larger numbers of servers and larger numbers of environments. Whether it's inside their four walls or outside their four walls, says Dot Cloud CEO Ben Golub. If you picture all of the languages and applications as roles, and all the environments as columns, you have this huge matrix that is always expanding. With Docker, we're trying to make the matrix go away, letting developers just worry about putting whatever they need into containers and letting the people who run the service worry about nothing but moving containers around. That was an mouthful. So this is quite interesting. And quite revolutionary for the internet um, industry, right? So eBay is doing it, Google is onto it, and um, yeah. So any questions? Any comments? I don't quite understand the system. They say they put data applications in containers and move around, but why? Mm -hmm. To use other computers, CPU power or to make it run on all machines, or to make a create, I don't know, it's, it's a bit vague, the idea, the technology, I didn't get quite well. Yeah, Tetrix, or playing uh, this, um, <laughs> it's like yeah. boxes. It's, yeah, uh, there is so if you look at this picture, uh, yeah, look at the picture on this t-shirt. Yes. The well with the containers and boxes. Yeah. So what it's doing is, is it's, it's, it's it's holding. Yes, go ahead, Doctor Patrick. Is this uh, technology different from the cloud technology? Yes. I think. It's, it, it's, it's, it's quite different. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit different. Yeah. 
because um, this is something a lot more. Uh, how can you say it? it's huge? Uh, you know, it's like a. See how they explain it here. Okay, inside the massive data centers uh, that drive things like Google Search and, and Gmail, and because it's all servers, right? They have these massive data centers, right? And you find they have thousands of machines. See Google and 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 um, and eBay. They don't just it's, they don't just have a computer like we have at home. It, they're huge, uh, you know, servers uh, filled filled in these huge rooms. So. See thousands of machines, each small enough to hold in your arms, right? Hold on. But thanks to a new breed of software that spans this sea of ser uh, service, the entire data center operates like a single operating system. One giant computer that runs any application and the computer throws at it. So it's, just, it's simplifying things for these companies like Google and eBay to transfer their data without having all these data centers around the world, as far as I understand it. Um, See, so Google calls this uh, warehouse scale computing. So anyway, this guy here, Solomon Hikes, he's the one who sort of came up with this idea. So he's trying to simplify things, you know? He's trying to simplify the, the, the transfer of these, making it easy of transferring these huge uh, the huge data from all these servers. And there was another point mentioned that they can access it from anywhere. So if, if you guys are not very much into IT, it might be a bit hard to understand. Even I don't fully grasp it, and, and I think said that you're having difficulty as well. Um, yes, I know there are similar technologies, but I don't understand what makes this technology different than other ones. It is able to make to me, I don't know. So here it says, okay, Docker, this is the whole, um, so the invention that is done, the software. So it's a way of packaging software applications, right, into their own shipping containers. So you can readily load them and run them on any machine equipped with any flavor of Linux the open source operating system that now drives so many uh, of the servers. So do you understand? Yeah, it makes it av available for you to use anyway, as long as you have a, a, a Linux uh, operating system. Linux operating systems have different packaging systems, like mm -hmm. one has deb dot dr d dot deb Ubuntu and Debian based operating mm -hmm. systems use it. Other ones use different ones. But I'm not mm -hmm. sure if they talk about it because it's, it looks like a different topic. Uh -huh. On okay. the other hand, because it is, if it's so, it is about Linux machines. Pe people who use Linux will be able to download and install more applications because mm -hmm. each each version has different packaging systems so you have to build your own applications from source code if the application is built in a different package. Mm -hmm. they, it reminds me of this but it's also the idea is a bit bigger in my opinion. I, I, yeah, I, I think this is like more yeah, it's 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 similar to that, I, I think, but it's it's quite vast. It's huge, you know. See, uh, here's I've highlighted the other paragraph where it sort of simplifies it for us. You know, the goal is to foster a world where anyone can treat any pool of machines in much the same way Google treats its private data containers. Right, so if you wrap your software in Docker containers, you so if you put your software in those containers you can readily spread them not only across the machines in your own data centers but onto popular cloud services such as Amazon web services and back again so it sort of links it you know even with a cloud service like Dr. Tachetin said so it sort of like a, it links it and, and makes everything a lot more easier to move about you know move about data because here they're talking about huge, huge amounts of data. Data, you know, it's not, uh, you know, something small. 
Um, so you have to understand this whole, I think, concept yeah. if, if you want to, you know, um, appreciate it. So, anyways, um, let me ask you some questions, and maybe we can use some of these, some of my grammar skill. Um, something off the actual article or off topic. Um, how does your mom or dad use the internet? <laughs> if they use it at all. <laughs> they use the internet to mm, make appointments. Wow. Oh. Uh, at hospitals. Uh, oh, that's cool. Look for their children's marks at school. Because we have a mm -hmm. system called e school something like this you can check your students check your children's marks etc hmm. that's interesting so okay good or anyone else want to share how their parents use the internet yes my parents are my parents are in their 70s and my mom's got a Facebook and she uses the Facebook to be in touch with her friends in in abroad mm -hmm. and my dad uh, reads the news online and mm, that's it Okay, that's good. You've used quite a few um, you know, pronouns today. That's excellent. Anyone else wants to share? My uh, my mom uh, doesn't use internet, and my mm. dad uh, died ten years ago. Um, he uh, didn't use to uh, use internet. So he didn't use it either. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Gany, did you want to say something? Ah, uh, yeah. My mom is an active user of the social networks, mm. and she uses Skype to talk with my sister. Mm -hmm. mm, that's all. That's good. That's good. Excellent. And um, okay, let me ask another question. Who taught you how to use the internet? I mean, we all had to start somehow, and yes. maybe some of some. I learned. Yeah. I learned by myself. <laughs> Excellent. It's flexi pronoun. Mm. Flexi pronoun. Uh, I think most of us did that. Yes. yes. No, I learned. Uh, at the school I was working at, mm -hmm. uh, by uh, a teacher who was teaching my students. I joined um, a group of, thir of uh, uh, eight year old children who were learning logo with a tortoise. And I wanted to learn, so I joined the group, and I started learning there. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Excellent. So wh when was this? Sorry, how long ago? <laughs> Ages. Ages. <laughs> it was in the 80s. The wow. 80s. Did we have internet it was back the, then? The, <laughs> yes, it was. It was in the eighties. The screen was black and white, and it was there was a mouse. No, there wasn't a mouse. It was with a keyboard. The controls. We had to learn the letters and the arrows to move the 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 screen. But it was very good. The children wow. move much faster than than the teacher and me, of course, mm -hmm. but I was so astonished to see how they work so fast 
that I wanted to join because compute, computers was an, an extra subject. So I asked the headmistress if I could join the class. She said I could. So I started learning with my students, with my primary school students. Mm -hmm. It see. was before, before, it was uh, 84, 86, 1984, 1986. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, that's something, isn't it? Wow, ages ago. That's just a while ago. Yes, yeah. ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, oh, running out of time. Okay, I'm going to quickly uh, assess you now. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and give you some prompts. So Sedvet, I'll begin with you since you're on the left. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I want you just to respond to me and give me the correct pronoun. Jane. Oh, Sedvet's gone. <laughs> yes, he vanished. Uh, okay, Cecilia, you want to... Jane Jordan. is her and herself. Yes, excellent. Joe? Him and himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, give me a sentence using Joe. Uh, uh, he, he couldn't listen to himself while he was speaking because his mother was hovering. I see. Good, good. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, he couldn't hear himself even, you can say. He couldn't he, hear himself. He couldn't, yeah. hear, he couldn't hear himself because his mother was hovering uh, in the next room, but it was so loudly, the hoover, that he mm. couldn't hear himself. No, not even himself could he hear. <laughs> That's good. I'll accept that. I'll accept all of them. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Cecilia. That's good. I'm happy. I know you're confident with this. So, Genny, um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, give me a, a um, reflexive pronoun for. Genny and Cecilia. Mm, he and she? Yeah. But also reflexive. They? Reflexive. Uh, oh, no. no, the last one on the table, the last one on the right. So it's mm. Genny and Cecilia. I'm using your name as in you. <laughs> Myself and herself. Yes, that's good. So if you want to make a plural? Ourselves. Yes, that's better. Ourselves. Well done. Well done. Okay. Um, can you give me a, a, a sentence using this reflexive pronoun? Um. Uh, we are learning English by ourselves. That's good. Nice and simple. Yes, that's yeah. good. I'll accept that. Okay, thank you very much, Annie. And Simone? Yes. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you just to reply, yeah? Okay. In any way. Um, very random. Where does Mary live? Uh, she lives in uh, Paris. Excellent. Uh, what sport does Paul love? Sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah. Uh, what sport does Paul like? What? Okay, I'll put it in the okay, please. in the chat. Maybe it's difficult to hear. 
So what sport does Paul love? Did you type anything in the Yes, can you see it? Chat? Maybe it's, there's a delay, a lag. Okay. It's, it's in the Colingo chat. In Colingo chat. I didn't so see what, anything. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, so what sport does Paul love? Did you hear me? No. no I, I can't understand or distinguish the, the words. OK, I'll give you a different one. Um, who will you give your new car to? Who will you give your new car to? Did you understand? Uh, no. And the problem, I can't see uh, what you typed in the chat. OK, can you go ahead? Are you in the wrong chat? Sorry. <laughs> OK, here, here. Here it is. OK. What sport does Paul love? Ah, OK. Uh, he loves uh, He loves tennis. That's good. Excellent. OK, that's good. I'm happy with that. OK, thank you very much, Simon. Uh, Dr. Tachetin, here's one for you. Um, thank, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Simon. See you next time, hopefully. <clears throat> OK, Dr. Tachetin, uh, let's see. Give me a sentence using, using um, Mike and Mary. And, and uh, use a reflexive pronoun. A re reflexive pronoun. They <clears throat> they have survived uh, themselves. They, they have survived survived, survived uh, from the uh, disaster themselves. Mm. Themselves. Themselves. Is there another one you can you can think of? Instead they, of this, they, no, they have their selves. Selves. You're close, but it's not their selves. It's themselves. Themselves. Yes. yes themselves. That's better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and uh, one more. What will Jenny and Mary buy tomorrow? Uh, Just any sentence, mm -hmm. reply to it. Mm -hmm. They will buy a new car. That's it. Well done. That was nice and simple. What will Jenny and Mary buy tomorrow? They will buy a new car. Excellent. OK, guys, that's it pretty much. Thank you very much for joining the class. Thank and, you. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. The same to you. And I'll see you again uh, next Thank time. You. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.